Behind the golden glow of every mango lies a hidden battlefield. Farmers spend years preparing orchards, only to face enemies that strike when fruit is nearly ripe. What lengths do they go to protect America's favorite tropical fruit? Did you know that Americans consume over 600,000 tons of mangoes every year and demand keeps rising? Mangoes may feel like a tropical luxury, but here in the U.S., they've become a booming industry. In Florida, California, and Texas alone, orchards stretch across thousands of acres, producing fruit worth hundreds of millions of dollars annually. But behind those impressive numbers lies a hidden battle few people ever hear about. A single mature mango tree can yield up to 200 pounds of fruit per season, yet farmers often lose as much as one-third of their harvest to unexpected threats. Storms, heat waves, and pests all play a part, but the most surprising enemy isn't what you'd expect. It's not insects or disease. It's squirrels. Agile, persistent, and clever, these wild raiders can strip an orchard bare, turning months of hard work into empty branches in just days. This documentary takes you into the heart of America's mango story. You'll see how farmers plant and care for young trees, the ingenious defenses they build to keep squirrels at bay, the joy and precision of harvest, and the high-tech factories where golden mangoes become juice that fills millions of bottles across the country. But before we begin, here's the question. Who really controls the fate of America's mango harvest farmers with modern technology, or the relentless force of nature represented by wild squirrels? If you believe technology will win, press one. If you think nature is still stronger, press zero. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss the next chapter of this story. Every great American mango crop starts with the ground. Before planting, fields are cleared, leveled, and tested. In sandy Florida and California soils, growers add compost and mulch to hold moisture. In Texas, they adjust pH to the sweet spot of 5.5, 7.5 with lime or sulfur. A deep rip breaks hard pans so young roots can dive, while raised beds and surface drains prevent waterlogging after storms. Planting typically happens in late spring. Trees are set about 25 feet apart, an orchard grid that maximizes light, airflow, and future access for harvest crews. The first two years are an exercise in patience. Mango trees usually need two, three years before a meaningful crop. During that time, pruning shapes a low, open canopy, so sunlight reaches interior wood and disease pressure falls. Wind can undo months of work in a single afternoon. To keep trunks upright and canopies stable, farmers use stakes, soft ties, and on blustery sites, windbreak rows that slow gusts. These simple defenses save branches and, later, thousands of pounds of fruit. Water is managed with precision. In drought-prone regions, drip irrigation feeds roots directly and cuts evaporation. It also lifts consistency and size. Compared with flood irrigation, well-tuned drip systems can deliver up to 20% more marketable fruit. Mulch rings reduce weeds and keep the root zone cool through summer heat. Nutrients are distributed according to growth stages. Young trees are fertilized with nitrogen to form leaf structure. Near flowering, potassium and phosphorus play a major role in supporting fruit set. Many orchards now combine soil testing with other indicators to determine timing of fertilization, with frequent doses rather than large, wasteful doses. Flowering is the most hopeful moment. A single panicle can carry hundreds of tiny blossoms, though only a fraction will become mangoes. Bees and breeze are the quiet workforce here. Some growers place managed hives along headlands to boost pollination and even out yields across blocks. From soil prep to first flowers, every step is deliberate and measurable. Roots anchor deeper, canopies open wider, and trees learn to stand against wind and heat. Just as fruit begins to swell, a new challenge moves in from the tree line quick, nimble, and hungry, wild squirrels. Just as mangoes begin to swell and turn golden, a new enemy emerges from the tree line. Squirrels. Unlike insects or storms that come and go, squirrels are relentless. They climb with ease, 
chew through tender shoots and bite into green fruit long before harvest. On some farms, losses can reach 20-30% of the total crop, an economic blow that can mean tens of thousands of dollars gone in a single season. The damage is more than just fruit stolen. Squirrels gnaw bark and break branches, leaving trees vulnerable to disease. Young orchards are the most at risk, where a few hungry families of squirrels can undo years of patient work. Farmers describe mornings when entire rows look stripped, with half-eaten mangoes scattered on the ground. To fight back, American farmers use a mix of methods. The first line of defense is physical barriers. Nylon nets draped over trees, trunk guards to stop climbing, and electric fences to block entry. These alone can reduce losses by half. Technology helps too. Motion-activated sprinklers, ultrasonic devices, and AI cameras that trigger alarms or lights keep many intruders away. Still, squirrels adapt quickly, learning new routes into the orchard. When deterrents fail, farmers escalate. Many states allow licensed hunting and population control programs for nuisance squirrels. With proper permits, trained marksmen or farmers themselves can legally hunt during approved seasons, ensuring populations stay in check while remaining compliant with wildlife laws. Permits typically require hunter safety certification, strict setback distances from homes and roads, safe backstops, posted warning signs, and end of season reporting, violations, risk fines, and permit revocation. Some counties even coordinate with professional wildlife officers to conduct limited, supervised control when damage is acute. Alongside this, humane trapping programs remain widely used. Live traps baited with peanuts catch squirrels without killing them. The animals are then relocated to forests miles away. On smaller farms, trained dogs patrol the perimeter, chasing intruders before they can climb. Despite these strategies, the struggle never fully ends. Squirrels are clever, persistent, and always testing defenses. Farmers know it's less about winning outright and more about keeping the balance just enough to bring a healthy harvest to market. So what do you think? Can farmers truly outsmart the squirrels for good or will nature always find a way back in? After years of care, the most anticipated moment arrives, harvest season. In American orchards, this usually begins in late summer, about 100, 120 days after flowering, when mangoes turn from deep green to shades of yellow, red, and orange. Timing is everything. If picked too early, the fruit lacks sweetness, too late, and it risks falling and bruising on the ground. Farmers walk the rows each morning, inspecting fruit carefully. On smaller trees, mangoes are hand-picked one by one, a method that preserves both fruit quality and the tree's health. For taller canopies, workers use long poles fitted with nets or baskets, skillfully twisting and catching each mango before it drops. The process is slow but deliberate, ensuring the fruit remains pristine. Once collected, baskets of mangoes are carried to shaded collection points. Here, workers sort out damaged or underripe fruit, leaving only the best for market and processing. Every step is about precision because a bruised mango not only loses value, but can also spoil others in the same crate. Yields vary, but a mature tree can provide 150, 200 pounds of fruit each season. On a 50-acre farm, this translates to over 200,000 pounds of mangoes in just one harvest cycle. The sight of golden piles stacked in crates is both breathtaking and rewarding a visual payoff for years of investment. To maintain freshness, mangoes are quickly moved to cooling facilities. Within hours of harvest, temperatures are lowered to slow ripening, extending shelf life for transport. Trucks then carry them to packing houses or directly to factories, where another transformation begins. For farmers, harvest isn't just work, it's celebration. Families often gather in the orchards, children helping load baskets while elders recall earlier seasons. The air fills with the sweet, resinous smell of ripe mangoes and the chatter of workers comparing yields. It is the moment that justifies every drop of sweat, every sleepless night spent protecting the orchard. The mango's journey, however, doesn't end here. What happens inside the factory will decide whether these fruits become bottled juice, canned pulp, or are shipped fresh across the nation. And that story is just as fascinating. Once the mangoes leave the orchards, their next destination is the processing plant, 
where tradition meets technology on an industrial scale. Here, speed and precision are everything. Trucks unload crates into massive sorting halls, where conveyor belts carry thousands of mangoes each hour. The first stage is inspection and trimming. Workers and cameras check for damage, while automated cutters remove stems. Fruit then passes through rotating rollers that gently separate sizes. Only the ripest, healthiest mangoes move forward. The rest are diverted for animal feed or compost. Next comes washing. High-pressure water jets and bubble washers scrub away dust and debris. Before this, the fruit undergoes a brief hot water treatment at around 115 degrees Fahrenheit, neutralizing enzymes that cause browning and extending shelf life. This simple step preserves the mango's signature golden color and fragrance. Peeling and slicing follow. In older times, this was manual work, but today, specialized machines use razor-sharp blades to peel with incredible precision, adjusting automatically to each fruit shape. The goal, minimal waste. Advanced systems now recover up to 99.5% of the pulp, leaving almost nothing behind but clean seeds and skin. The flesh is then crushed and filtered. Industrial crushers break it down into smooth pulp, which passes through homogenizers to create a uniform texture. At this point, the factory smells intensely sweet, a concentrated aroma of summer. The pulp may go two ways, some destined for juice, others for frozen packs or canned puree. For juice, degassing systems remove trapped air bubbles, ensuring flavor stability. The liquid is pasteurized to eliminate microbes, then cooled and piped to filling lines. Bottles and cans move in synchronized circles under gravity-fed fillers, sealed in fractions of a second by automated cappers. Each line can produce thousands of bottles per hour, ready for nationwide distribution. Waste is minimized throughout. Seeds are separated for animal feed, skins for compost, and excess pulp for byproducts like jams or ice cream flavoring. Nothing is left unused, turning mango farming into a nearly zero waste system. By the time pallets roll onto refrigerated trucks, what began as delicate fruit hanging in orchards is now transformed into durable, portable products, mango juice, pulp, and concentrate that bring the taste of summer to millions of households across the U.S. From farm to factory, the scale is staggering. A single plant can process tens of thousands of gallons per day, ensuring Americans enjoy mangoes long after the harvest has ended. From soil preparation to factory shelves, the story of American mangoes is one of resilience, ingenuity, and passion. Farmers invest years nurturing young trees, pruning branches, and conserving water, all in pursuit of a single harvest. They battle storms, heat, and above all, the relentless squirrels that raid orchards with surprising skill. Each season is a gamble, yet with patience and innovation, they protect enough fruit to fill baskets and keep the promise of a sweet reward. The harvest itself is more than agriculture, it's a celebration. Families gather in orchards as fruit turns golden, sharing the joy of baskets brimming with mangoes. Those moments, filled with scent and laughter, remind us that farming is not just work, but heritage passed down through generations. Then comes transformation. Inside vast plants, cutting-edge machines peel, crush, and bottle mangoes with astonishing efficiency. Up to 99.5% of pulp is recovered, turning what once hung on branches into juice that fills millions of bottles each year. Every drop reflects a blend of tradition and technology, of human hands and industrial precision. Together, these steps tell a bigger story that modern farming is never just about production. It is about balance between man and nature, patience and speed, local challenges and global markets. For American mango growers, success means outsmarting squirrels, weathering storms, and adapting every season to bring fruit to tables nationwide. And so, the next time you enjoy a slice of mango or sip from a chilled bottle of juice, remember the journey behind it. It is the story of farmers who refuse to give up, who built defenses against nature's trickiest thieves, and who transformed fragile fruit into something lasting. One question remains, in this ongoing battle between technology and nature, which side do you believe will shape the future of farming?